The Sino-Soviet split (1956–1966) was the breaking of political relations between the People's Republic of China (PRC) and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics (USSR), caused by doctrinal divergences arising from each of the two powers' different interpretation of Marxism-Leninism as influenced by the national interests of each country during the Cold War. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, debates of ideological orthodoxy between the Communist parties of the USSR and of the PRC became disputes about Soviet policies of de-Stalinization and peaceful coexistence with the capitalist West. Despite such background politics, to the Chinese public Mao Zedong proposed a belligerent attitude towards capitalist countries, an initial rejection of the Soviets' peaceful coexistence policy, which he perceived as Marxist revisionism by the Russians. Since 1956 after Nikita Khrushchev denounced Joseph Stalin and Stalinism China and Russia had progressively disagreed and diverged about orthodox interpretation of Marxist ideology. By 1961, intractable differences of philosophy provoked the Communist Party of China to formally denounce Soviet communism as the product of revisionist traitors. The Sino-Soviet split was about who would lead the revolution of world communism. To whom, China or Russia, would the vanguard parties of the world turn for aid and assistance? In that vein, the USSR and the PRC competed for ideological leadership through their respective networks of communist parties in the countries of their spheres of influence. Geopolitically, the Sino-Soviet split was a pivotal event of the bipolar Cold War (1945–1991), as important as the Berlin Wall (1961), the Cuban Missile Crisis (1962), and the Vietnam War (1965–1975), because it facilitated the Sino-American rapprochement of the 1970s. Nixon visit to China. Internationally, the geopolitical rivalry between communists—Chinese Stalinism and Russian peaceful coexistence—eliminated the myth that monolithic communism was an actor in the 1947–1950 period of the Vietnam War and in world politics—such realpolitik established the tripolar geopolitics of the latter part of the Cold War. History. Topic. Origins In taking communism to China, the leader of the Communist Party of China CPC, Mao Zedong, fought against Imperial Japan, and especially the Chinese Civil War 1927 against the nationalist Kuomintang, led by Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek. Stalin played both sides and Mao ignored most of his advice. During the Second World War 1939 Stalin advised Mao to enter an anti-Japanese coalition with Chiang Kai-shek. After the war, Stalin advised Mao against seizing power and to collaborate with the nationalists, because of Stalin's Treaty of Friendship and Alliance 1945 with the Kuomintang, in communist solidarity, Mao abided Stalin. In the event, Gen. Chiang Kai-shek opposed the USSR's annexation of Tanuyuriankai. Three months after the Japanese surrender, Stalin broke the treaty requiring Soviet withdrawal from Manchuria, gave Mao control of the region, and ordered Gen. Rodion Malinovsky to give the Japanese army's spoils of war to the Chinese communists. In the 1945 to 1949 period, Chiang Kai-shek received large amounts of financial and military assistance from the United States, which tried to broker peace between him and Mao. In 1948–1949, the nationalist armies collapsed and the leaders fled to Formosa Taiwan. .As head of state of the People's Republic of China, Mao visited Moscow December 1949 to February 1950 and returned to China with the Sino-Soviet Treaty of Friendship 1950, which included a $300 million loan, the transfer of former Russian colonial properties, and a 30-year military alliance. Under Soviet guidance, the PRC applied the Soviet model of centralized planned economy, the planning and development made heavy industry the priority and consumer goods production the second priority. Despite Soviet guidance, Mao developed the basic ideas of China's Great Leap Forward 1958 from an agrarian society to an industrial society. Ideologically, to justify realizing the modernization of China, Mao argued that orthodox Marxism, rooted in industrialized Europe, could not readily be adapted and applied to the agricultural societies of Eastern Asia, and adapted Marxism to Chinese socio-economic conditions. In 1947, Mao sent the journalist Anna Louise Strong with documents to the West, and to show them to party leaders in the United States and Europe. 
but that it was not necessary to take them to Moscow. Mao's trust in Strong derived from her article, The Thought of Mao Zedong, and the book Dawn Comes Up Like Thunder Out of China, an intimate account of the liberated areas in China, 1948, reporting that Mao's intellectual feat was to change Marxism from a European form to an Asiatic form in ways of which neither Marx nor Lenin could dream. The book was banned in the USSR, as anti-Soviet literature. Topic. After Stalin In 1954, new Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev sought to improve the USSR's relations with China by reaching new trade agreements. He acknowledged Stalin's economic unfairness to China, arranged for the USSR to fund 15 industrial projects in China, and also arranged mutual exchanges of technicians. Under the trade agreements, the two countries exchanged economic specialists CA, 10,000 by 1960 and political advisors CA, 1,500, and China sent laborers to fill the shortage of workers in Siberia. Despite this economic cooperation, Mao and Khrushchev disliked each other. In the field of international relations, the PRC and the USSR strengthened their relationship through diplomacy, by encouraging Vietnamese rapprochement, by way of a peace treaty between Communist North Vietnam and non-Communist South Vietnam, in 1954. In the event, by 1955, 60% of China's exports went to Russia, and Mao had begun implementation of a Chinese version of the Soviet five-year plan. In 1956, Sino-Soviet relations began to deteriorate when Khrushchev initiated the destalinization of the USSR. In a secret speech to the 20th Congress of the CPSU, on the cult of personality and its consequences, Khrushchev criticized Stalin the man and Stalin's policies, especially the Great Purge of the Communist Party, in which Stalin killed hundreds of thousands of people. Khrushchev's destalinization of the Soviet Union caused a serious domestic problem for Mao, who had emulated Stalin and Stalinism in the development of Chinese communism. For Mao, the Hungarian Revolution of 1956 was a serious political concern, because such a revolt questioned the political legitimacy of Communist Party government. In response, the Chinese Communist Party formally denounced Khrushchev's destalinization policies as ideological revisionism of Marx, and reaffirmed the ideological orthodoxy of Mao's Stalinist government. While preserving diplomatic and economic relations with the USSR, the abstractions of ideology had cracked socialist unity. Mao perceived that the Soviet Union's foreign policy of peaceful coexistence with the West would isolate the PRC in every sense of geopolitics. The Hungarian Revolution made Mao aware that such revolts might occur in the PRC. He sought to counter possible political discontent with the Hundred Flowers Campaign 1956 of political liberalization, which proved too successful when it featured criticism of Mao as party chairman and head of state. Hence, Khrushchev's political liberalization of the USSR compelled Mao to retain the Stalinist model of government for the PRC. The ideological break was assured when Khrushchev's Stalinist enemies failed to depose him, which left China and the USSR practicing different forms of Marxism, leading to ideological quarrels and enmity. Despite Khrushchev's efforts to maintain positive Sino Soviet relations, especially with technical assistance to China's nuclear weapons program, political tensions remained strong, because the USSR's policy of peaceful coexistence threatened the PRC's geopolitical credibility, especially after failed rapprochement with the U.S. that diplomatic failure and the presence of U.S. nuclear weapons in the Republic of China Taiwan led Mao to a policy of confrontation with the U.S. in 1958. The ideological differences, especially the Soviet policy of peaceful coexistence with the West, worsened Sino-Soviet relations. Notably, Mao's Great Leap Forward, a Stalinist program of instant industrialization, led to a cult of personality around Mao as the true leader of the socialist world. Mao widened the ideological divergence between the PRC and the USSR with criticism of Khrushchev's economic policies, which included foreign aid for China. To the USSR, the ideological radicalism of the PRC destabilized peaceful coexistence with the West. In response, the USSR reduced aid to China. In July 1958, Khrushchev went to Beijing to negotiate for bases in China for Soviet submarines. Instead, Mao accused Khrushchev of trying to control the PRC's coast, and there was no deal. 
At the end of August, Mao tried to force the issue of PRC control of Taiwan, held by the remnant of the Republic of China Rock. China attacked rock-held Kinmen and the Matsu Islands, beginning the Second Taiwan Strait Crisis the 23rd of August to the 22nd of September 1958. Mao had not warned Khrushchev of the attack, which forced the USSR to rethink peaceful coexistence with the West, especially after the US publicly committed to the military defense of the ROC. The PRC's failure to warn the USSR of the attack worsened Khrushchev's relations with Mao, especially because the US threatened nuclear war if the PRC invaded Taiwan. Such Chinese actions then compelled the USSR's involvement in Sino-American quarrels over a lost civil war. In that geopolitical context, Khrushchev became skeptical of Mao's mental health, fearing that his confrontational behavior might provoke a nuclear war. Khrushchev cancelled eight agreements, including delivery of Soviet nuclear weapons to the PRC. That lack of clear and candid communications from the Chinese and ideological disagreement about the Great Leap Forward had seriously damaged Sino-Soviet relations. Onset. The events of the 1958–59 period convinced Mao that the USSR was not trustworthy. In 1959, Premier Khrushchev met with U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower 1953 to decrease tensions with the West. To that end, the USSR had reneged an agreement to provide technical aid for the development of a Chicom nuclear weapon. The USSR sided with India in the Sino-Indian War 1962 by way of moderate diplomatic relations with India. Each collaboration of the USSR with the West offended Mao. Thereafter, he perceived Khrushchev as too tolerant of the West, despite the USSR sometimes confronting the Western powers. The Chinese Communist Party believed that the Communist Party of the Soviet Union concentrated too much on Soviet U.S. cooperation for the domination of the world. With actions that contradicted the ideology of Marxism-Leninism, Mao had expected an aggressive response from Khrushchev about the U-2 spy plane incident 1960 over Russia. At the 1960 Paris summit meeting, Khrushchev demanded an official apology from U.S. President Eisenhower, who refused. Mao and the CCP took Eisenhower's response as a political affront to socialist countries, and the PRC responded with political rallies demanding that Khrushchev act against the American aggressors. To the Chinese Communists, Khrushchev not responding to the U.S. with military force tarnished his image as a Communist leader. At the 1960 International Meeting of Communist and Workers' Parties, in Bucharest, Mao and Khrushchev argued and each socialist attacked the other's interpretation of Marxist doctrine as the incorrect road to world socialism. Mao argued that Khrushchev's greater emphasis upon material easiness would make the people ideologically soft and unrevolutionary. Khrushchev replied, If we could promise the people nothing, except revolution, they would scratch their heads and say, Isn't it better to have good goulash? In the 1950s, the Sino Soviet split manifested itself indirectly through actions related to other communist states. China denounced the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia 1945-1992 and Tito, who had pursued a non-aligned foreign policy, neither pro-Russian nor pro-Chinese. The USSR criticized People's Socialist Republic of Albania and Enver Hoxha, who had refused to abandon Stalinism and had aligned with the PRC, starting the Soviet-Albanian split. Moreover, in accordance with geopolitical circumstance, the USSR provided moral support to the Tibetan rebels of the 1959 Tibetan uprising against the PRC. By 1960, the Sino-Soviet split was manifested as open criticism, when Khrushchev and Peng Zhen openly argued at the Congress of the Romanian Communist Party. Khrushchev insulted Chairman Mao as, "...a nationalist, an adventurist, and a deviationist." Peng Zhen called Khrushchev a Marxist revisionist whose regime of the USSR showed him to be a patriarchal, arbitrary and tyrannical ruler. In the end, Premier Khrushchev denounced the People's Republic of China in an 80-page letter to the Romanian Communist Party Congress. In June 1960, the USSR openly denounced PR Albania at the height of the destalinization of the USSR. In China, Bao Sansan described the party's message to the cadres in China, 
When Khrushchev stopped Russian aid to Albania, Hoxha said to his people, even if we have to eat the roots of grass to live, we won't take anything from Russia, China is not guilty of chauvinism and immediately sent food to our brother country." Khrushchev further responded to Mao's criticism by withdrawing some 1,400 technicians from the PRC, which led to cancellation of some 200 scientific joint projects intended to foster cooperation between Russia and China. To Mao, the withdrawal of Soviet technicians from China justified his accusation that Khrushchev had caused not only the PRC's great economic failures, but also had caused the famines occurred during the Great Leap Forward. As socialist countries, the PRC and the USSR still had reason to prefer political unity. In the PRC, Chairman Mao needed to continue economic relations, to alleviate famine in China, and resolve border disputes with India. In the USSR, Premier Khrushchev had lost political ground, because of his policy of détente with the U.S. His accusations of U.S. espionage against the Eisenhower government had generated political tensions that broke USSR-U.S. diplomacy at the Paris summit meeting, which worsened relations between the American and Russian superpowers, and yet, the PRC remained allied to the USSR. In November 1960, at the Congress of 81 Communist Parties in Moscow, the Chinese argued about the interpretation of Marxist doctrine with the Soviets, and with most of the other socialist delegations, yet compromised in effort to avoid an ideological split among socialist nations. In October 1961, at the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, the USSR and the PRC renewed their conflicting ideological disputes. In December 1961, the USSR broke diplomatic relations with People's Socialist Republic of Albania, which had been aligned with the PRC, escalating the ideological dispute from political party level to the national level. When India annexed Goa, following demand by the Goan people, who were flabbergasted by Portugal's resistance to leaving its occupied territory in 1961, Moscow lauded the action while an unimpressed Beijing declared that, "...India's apparent contribution to anti-imperialist struggle consists of taking on the world's smallest imperialist power." In 1962, the PRC and the USSR broke diplomatic relations. Chairman Mao criticized Premier Khrushchev for withdrawing from the Cuban Missile Crisis 1962, that Khrushchev has moved from adventurism to capitulationism. Khrushchev replied that Mao's confrontational policies would lead to a nuclear war. At the same time, the USSR supported India against the Chinese invasion of the Indian Northeast in the Sino-Indian War 1962. .The aftermath of the Cuban Missile Crisis placed nuclear disarmament at foremost in 20th-century geopolitics. To limit production of nuclear weapons by other nations, the USSR, the UK, and the US signed the Limited Test Ban Treaty the 5th of August 1963. In that time, the PRC were developing their own nuclear weapons, and Mao saw the Limited Test Ban Treaty as an attempt to slow China's becoming a nuclear superpower. He was angered by Khrushchev's failure to aggressively deal with the U.S. Premier Khrushchev's failure to confront the West led Chairman Mao to publish nine September 1963 to July 1964 letters in which he openly and specifically criticized the leadership of Nikita Khrushchev as Premier of the USSR. After the occurrence of the Sino-Soviet split, Chairman Mao turned to the countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America to develop new and strong alliances to further the economic and ideological redevelopment of the People's Republic of China. Topic. Formal ideological statements The governments of the PRC and the USSR supported their actions with formal ideological statements. In June 1963, the PRC published the Chinese Communist Party's proposal concerning the general line of the international communist movement, and the USSR replied with an open letter of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, such were the last communications to each other, as socialists. By 1964, Chairman Mao said that a counter-revolution in the USSR had re-established capitalism, consequently, the USSR broke relations with the PRC, and the Warsaw Pact soon followed the Soviets. After Leonid Brezhnev deposed Premier Khrushchev in October 1964, Chinese Prime Minister Zhou Enlai went to Moscow and met with Brezhnev and Alexei Kosygin, who were the new leaders of the USSR. The meeting with the Soviet leaders went poorly, and the disappointed Zhou returned to China and reported to Chairman Mao that the Soviets remained firm in their stance, for which Mao denounced 
Khrushchevism without Khrushchev, Mao's dismissal continued the Sino Soviet split. China accused the Soviet Union of colluding with the U.S., for instance during the Glassboro Summit Conference June 1967 between Kosygin and U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson. Radio Peking said that they discussed, "...a great conspiracy on a worldwide basis, criminally selling the rights of the revolution of the Vietnam people, Arabs, as well as Asian, African, and Latin American peoples to U.S. imperialists." Topic. Conflict Topic. Cultural revolution Meanwhile, in China, Mao Zedong launched the Cultural Revolution 1966 to prevent the development of the Russian-style bureaucratic communism of the USSR. The schools and universities were closed as students, following Mao's proclamations, organized themselves into Red Guard, grassroots-led units of radicals. However, this process was chaotic and violent and had no real leadership, and so over time the Red Guard divided into factions, and their subsequent violence provoked civil war in some parts of China. Mao had the army suppress the Red Guard factions, and when factionalism occurred in the army, Mao dispersed the Red Guard, and then began to rebuild the Chinese Communist Party. The vast grassroots experiment that was the Cultural Revolution stressed, strained, and broke China's political relations with the USSR, and relations with the West. Nevertheless, despite the Maoism versus Marxism Leninism differences interpreting Marxism, Russia and China aided North Vietnam, headed by Ho Chi Minh, in fighting the Vietnam War 1945 which Maoism defined as a peasant revolution against foreign imperialism. The Chinese allowed Soviet materiel across China for the North to prosecute the war against the Republic of Vietnam, a U.S. ally. In that time, besides the Socialist People's Republic of Albania, only the Communist Party of Indonesia advocated the Maoist policy of peasant revolution. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> National interests conflict. Since 1956, the Sino-Soviet ideological split between communist political parties had escalated to small-scale warfare between Russia and China. Thereby, in January 1967, Red Guards attacked the Soviet embassy in Beijing. Earlier, in 1966, the Chinese had revived the matter of the Russo-Chinese border that was demarcated in the 19th century and imposed upon the Qing dynasty (1644–1912) monarchy by means of unequal treaties that virtually annexed Chinese territory to the Russian Empire. Despite not asking the return of territory, the Chinese did ask the USSR to formally, publicly, acknowledge that said border, established with the Treaty of Igun 1858 and the Convention of Peking 1860, was a historic Russian injustice against China, the Soviet government ignored the matter. Then, in 1968, the Red Guard purges meant to restore doctrinal orthodoxy to China had provoked civil war in parts of the country, which Mao resolved with the People's Liberation Army suppressing the pertinent cohorts of the Red Guard. The excesses of the Red Guard and of the Cultural Revolution declined. Mao required internal political equilibrium in order to protect China from the strategic and military vulnerabilities that resulted from its political isolation from the community of nations. Topic. Border war Meanwhile, during 1968, the Soviet army had massed along the 4,380 kilometers 2,738 miles border with China—especially at the Xinjiang frontier, in northwest China, where the Soviets might readily induce Turkic separatists to insurrection. Militarily, in 1961, the USSR had 12 divisions and 200 airplanes at that border. In 1968, there were 25 divisions, 1,200 airplanes, and 120 medium range missiles. Although China had detonated its first nuclear weapon, the 596 test, in October 1964, the People's Liberation Army was militarily inferior to the Red Army. By March 1969, the Sino Soviet border confrontation had become the Sino Soviet border conflict, with fighting at the Usuri River and on Domansky Zhenbao Island. More small scale warfare occurred at Tielieketi in August. 
U.S. journalist Harrison Salisbury reported that Soviet sources hinted at a possible first strike against China's nuclear weapons testing site in the Lop Nur Basin. U.S. Presidents Kennedy and Johnson had considered attempting to destroy the Chinese program before it succeeded, but the USSR had refused to cooperate. Now the U.S. warned the USSR that a nuclear attack against China would precipitate a worldwide war, and the USSR backed off. Aware of the Soviet threat, China built large-scale underground shelters, such as Beijing's underground city, and military shelters such as the Underground Project 131 Command Center in Hubei, and the 816 nuclear military plant in Fuling, Chongqing. Topic. Geopolitical pragmatism After the Sino-Soviet border conflict, the 2nd of March to the 11th of September 1969, Soviet Prime Minister Alexei Kosygin secretly went to Beijing to confer with Premier Zhou Enlai, and by October, the PRC and the USSR began determining the demarcation of their national borders. Despite not resolving the border demarcation, the meetings restored Sino-Soviet diplomatic communications, and, by 1970, Mao understood that the People's Republic of China could not simultaneously fight the USSR and the USA, whilst suppressing internal disorder. In July 1971, Nixon's National Security Advisor Henry Kissinger, went to Beijing to arrange the Nixon visit to China February 1972. Kissinger's actions offended the USSR, who then convoked a summit meeting with President Nixon. That action recast the Cold War as tripolar relation among Moscow and Washington and Beijing. Concerning the 4,380 kilometers (2,738 miles) Sino-Soviet border, Soviet propaganda agitated against the PRC's complaint about the unequal Treaty of Igun (1858) and the Convention of Peking (1860), which cheated China of territory and natural resources. To that effect, in the 1972-73 period, the USSR deleted the Chinese and Manchu place names. Iman, Yiman Yiman, Tetyuk, Yizu He Yezue, and Suchin from the map of the Soviet Far East, and replaced them with the Russian place names Dalnereshensk, Dalnegorsk, and Partizansk, respectively. To facilitate social acceptance of such cultural revision, the Soviet press misrepresented the historical presence of Chinese people in lands gained by Tsarist Russia which provoked Russian violence against the local Chinese populaces. Moreover, politically inconvenient exhibits were removed from museums, and vandals covered with cement the Yurchin script steel, about the Jin dynasty, in the Khabarovsk Museum. Topic. Competing front groups After Mao Zedong broke bitterly with the Soviet Union in the late 1950s, he launched a worldwide rivalry. Mao set up a network of pro-Chinese, anti-Soviet parties and communist fronts that directly challenged the pro-Soviet organizations in many countries. By 1970, Sino-Soviet ideological rivalry extended to Africa and the Middle East, where the Soviet Union and China funded and supported opposed political parties, militias, and states, notably the Agaden War (1977–1978) between Ethiopia and Somalia, the Rhodesian Bush War (1964–1979), the Zimbabwe. Gakorahundi 1980 to 1987 the Angolan Civil War 1975 to 2002 the Mozambican Civil War 1977 to 1992 and factions of the Palestinian people in Thailand the pro-chinese communist fronts were organized with a violent revolutionary goal in mind but they were based in local Chinese enclaves and failed to connect with the larger population topic equilibrium Topic. The transition In 1971, the failure of Project 571, an attempted coup d'état against Chairman Mao, and the death of Marshal Lin Biao, Mao's executive officer, concluded the politically radical phase of the Cultural Revolution 1966 Afterwards, China resumed political normality, until Mao's death the 9th of September 1976, and the emergence of the politically radical Gang of Four. The re-establishment of Chinese domestic tranquility ended armed confrontation with the USSR, but it did not improve Sino-Soviet diplomatic relations because in 1973 the Soviet army garrisons at the Russo-Chinese border were twice as large as the 1969 garrisons. That continued military threat prompted the Chinese to denounce 
Soviet social imperialism by accusing the USSR of being an enemy of world revolution. Topic: <laughs> Transcending Mao. After thwarting the 1976 coup d'état by the radical Gang of Four, who argued for ideologic purity at the expense of internal development, the Chinese Communist Party politically rehabilitated Deng Xiaoping and appointed him head of the internal modernization programs in 1977. While reversing Mao's policies without attacking him, the politically moderate Deng's political and economic reforms began China's transition from a planned economy to a semi-capitalist mixed economy, which he furthered with strengthened commercial and diplomatic relations with the West. In 1979, on the 30th anniversary of the foundation of the PRC, the government of Deng Xiaoping denounced the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution as a national failure, and, in the 1980s, pursued pragmatic policies such as seeking truth from facts, and the Chinese road to socialism, which withdrew the PRC from the high-level abstractions of ideology, polemic, and Russian Marxist revisionism, the Sino-Soviet split had lost some political importance. Topic. Competing hegemonies After the government of Mao Zedong, the Sino-Soviet split about ideology became useless domestic politics, but was useful geopolitics, wherein conflicted the Russian and Chinese hegemonies in the pursuit of their national interests. The initial Soviet-Chinese proxy war occurred in Indochina, in 1975, where the communist victory of the National Liberation Front Viet Cong and of North Vietnam in the 30-year Vietnam War had produced a post-colonial Indochina that featured pro-Soviet governments in Vietnam Socialist Republic of Vietnam and Laos Lao People's Democratic Republic, and a pro-Chinese government in Cambodia Democratic Kampuchea. At first, Vietnam ignored the Khmer Rouge domestic reorganization of Cambodia, by the Pol Pot government 1975 as an internal matter, until the Khmer Rouge attacked the ethnic Vietnamese populace of Cambodia, and the border with Vietnam. The counterattack precipitated the Cambodian-Vietnamese War 1975 that deposed Pol Pot in 1978. In response, the PRC denounced the Vietnamese, and retaliated by invading northern Vietnam. In the Sino Vietnamese War, 1979, in turn, the USSR denounced the PRC's invasion of Vietnam. In December 1979, the USSR invaded the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan to maintain the Afghan Communist government in power. The PRC viewed the Soviet invasion as a local feint, within Soviets' greater, geopolitical encirclement of China. In response, the PRC entered a tripartite alliance with the U.S. and Pakistan to sponsor Islamist Afghan armed resistance to the Soviet occupation CF. Operation Storm 333. Meanwhile, the Sino-Soviet split became manifest when Deng Xiaoping, the paramount leader of China, required the removal of three obstacles so that Sino-Soviet relations might improve the massed Soviet army at the Sino-Soviet border and in Mongolia. Soviet support of the Vietnamese occupation of Kampuchea Cambodia. The Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, in 1981–82 period, Sino-American relations were strained by geopolitical disagreements about wars, such as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the Falklands War. At the CCP's 12th Congress in September 1982, Deng Xiaoping revived the revisionist, Three Worlds idea that characterized China as a neutral player in a world divided by conflict between the superpowers. Meanwhile, in March 1982 in Tashkent, USSR Secretary Leonid Brezhnev gave a speech conciliatory towards the PRC, and Deng took advantage of Brezhnev's proffered conciliation. In autumn of 1982, Sino-Soviet relations resumed semi-annually at the vice ministerial level. When Brezhnev died in November 1982, a Chinese delegation, headed by Foreign Minister Huang Hua, attended the funeral, where Huang praised the late Soviet leader Brezhnev as an outstanding champion of world peace, and expressed hope for normal relations with Moscow. However, Huang's actions at Brezhnev's funeral led to his dismissal from office after he returned to the PRC. 
Three years later, in 1985, when Mikhail Gorbachev became president of the USSR, he worked to restore political relations with the PRC, he reduced the Soviet army garrisons at the Sino-Soviet border and in Mongolia, resumed trade, and dropped the matter of the 1969 border demarcation dispute. Nonetheless, the Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan remained unresolved, and Sino-Soviet diplomacy remained cool, which circumstance allowed the Reagan government to sell American weapons to China and so counter the geopolitics of the USSR in the Russo-American aspect of the tripolar Cold War. Diplomatic relations between China and Afghanistan were neutral during the reign of the Afghan king, yet, when pro-Soviet Afghan communists seized power in 1978, relations between China and the Afghan communists quickly worsened and then became hostile. Although the Afghan communists supported China's enemies in Vietnam, and blamed China for supporting militant Afghan anti-communists, China responded to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan by supporting the Afghan Mujahideen with aid, small arms, and materiel, delivered by the Pakistani military and intelligence and the CIA, and likewise increased their military presence in Xinjiang, near Afghanistan. China acquired American military equipment to defend from Soviet attack. The Chinese People's Liberation Army trained and supported the Afghan Mujahideen during the Soviet Afghan War. China moved training camps for the Mujahideen from Pakistan into China proper, which were supported with military advisors and soldiers. Afterwards, the Mujahideen were provided anti aircraft missiles, rocket launchers, and machine guns. Throughout the 1980s, Sino Soviet political relations improved, by trade agreements and cultural exchanges. However, ideological relations between the Communist parties of Russia and China remained unchanged, because the Chinese Communist Party CCP refused to accept the Communist Party of the Soviet Union CPSU as their Marxist equals. Topic. Reform In May 1989, Soviet President Gorbachev visited the People's Republic of China, where the government doubted the practical efficacy of perestroika and glasnost. Since the PRC did not officially recognize the USSR as a socialist state, there was no official opinion about Gorbachev's reformation of Soviet socialism. Privately, the Chinese communists thought that the USSR was unprepared for such political and social reforms without first reforming the economy of the USSR. The Chinese perspective derived from how the paramount leader, Deng Xiaoping, effected economic reform with a semi-capitalist mixed economy, while the political power remained with the Chinese Communist Party. Ultimately, Gorbachev's reformation of Russian society ended Soviet communist government and provoked the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. Topic see also History of the Soviet Union 1953-64 History of the Soviet Union 1964-82 History of the People's Republic of China Sino-Albanian split Sino-American relations Sino-Soviet relations Sino-Soviet Treaty of Friendship Soviet imperialism Topic References Topic Further reading Chong, Young, and John Halliday. Mao, The Unknown Story. New York, Alfred A. Knopf, 2005. Ellison, Herbert J., ed. The Sino-Soviet Conflict, A Global Perspective 1982, on Line Ford, Harold P., Calling the Sino-Soviet Split, Studies in Intelligence, Winter 1998-99. Friedman, Jeremy. Soviet Policy in the Developing World and the Chinese Challenge in the 1960s, Cold War History 2010-10 No. 2 pp. 247-272. Friedman, Jeremy. Shadow Cold War, The Sino-Soviet Competition for the Third World UNC Press Books, 2015. Go, Evelyn. Constructing the U.S. Rapprochement with China, 1961-1974, from Red Menace to Tacit Ally Cambridge University Press, 2005 Jian, Chen. Mao's China and the Cold War. Chapel Hill, N.C., The University of North Carolina Press, 2001. Kachavi, Noam. The Sino-Soviet Split, in a Companion to John F. Kennedy 2014, pp. 366-383. Li, Hua Yu et al., eds China Learns from the Soviet Union, 1949-present The Harvard Cold War Studies Book Series 2011 excerpt and text search Luthi, Lorenz M. 2010. The Sino-Soviet Split, Cold War in the Communist World. Princeton UP. ISBN 978-1400837625. Mark, Kai Kwan. China and the World Since 1945, An International History Routledge, 2011 Olson, Mari. 
Soviet Vietnam relations and the role of China 1949 to 64 changing alliances Routledge 2007 Ross Robert S ed China the United States and the Soviet Union tripolarity and policy making in the Cold War 1993 online Scalapino Robert A 1964 Sino-Soviet competition in Africa Foreign Affairs 42 4 640 to 654 doi.10.2307.20029719. JSTOR 20029719. Wested, Odd Arn, ed. Brothers in Arms, The Rise and Fall of the Sino-Soviet Alliance, 1945–1963 Stanford University Press, 1998 Topic Primary sources Luthi, Lorenz M. 2008. 24 Soviet bloc documents on Vietnam and the Sino-Soviet split, 1964–1966. Cold War International History Project Bulletin, 16–367–398, Bao Sansan and Betty Bao Lord 1964–1966, 8th Moon, The True Story of a Young Girl's Life in Communist China, Reprint, New York, Scholastic, ch. 9. PP 122 124 Summary of lectures to cadres on Sino-Soviet split Prozumanchikov Mikhail U The Sino-Indian Conflict The Cuban Missile Crisis and the Sino-Soviet Split October 1962 New Evidence from the Russian Archives Cold War International History Project Bulletin 1996 8 number no. 9 PP 1996 to 7 Online Topic External links The CWIHP document collection on the Sino-Soviet split The Great Debate – Documents of the Sino-Soviet split at Marxists Internet Archive